Hello Nigerians, welcome to Newspaper Review here on TAP TV. My name is Kolade Ogunsomi. We'll be reading headlines from the Vanguard newspaper. And the bold headline on the Vanguard newspaper says, Fearless in October protests, soldiers, police, crack down on protesters in rivers, Abuja and Kanu. That can be found on page 5 of the Vanguard newspaper. And again, Emirate lands, Emirate lands in Lagos two years after suspending operation. That can be found on page 10 of the Vanguard newspaper. And NNPCL allocates 4.6 million barrels of crude oil to Dangote refinery. That's on found on page 9, page 19 of the Vanguard newspaper. Independence anniversary. Nigeria at risk of dictatorship. Atiku and Obi. That can be found on page 9 of the Vanguard newspaper. And on the Punch newspaper, flooding worsening despite 180 billion spent on them. That can be found on page 10 of the Punch newspaper. Portacot refinery misses seventh production rollout deadline. That can be found on page 79 of the Punch newspaper. Dow Dulawa allegation against Matawa self-serving analyst. That can be found on page 20 of the Punch newspaper. Petrol imports dropped by 3.5 billion liters after subsidy removal. Federal government. Details on that can be found on page 73. And lastly, on the Punch newspaper, October 1st protest records low turnout nationwide. That can be found on page 10 of the Punch newspaper. Loss of sexual feeling or lack of sexual feeling. And here on the Vanguard newspaper, Independence Day. Jonathan's governor's marks says Nigeria will overcome challenges. Details of that can be found on page 10 of the Daily Trust newspaper. Samoa agreement, our apology. That can be found on page 3 of the Daily Trust newspaper. Fearless in October, protests in Lagos, Ondo, Oshun, altered in Abuja. Details of that can be found on page 4 of the Daily Trust newspaper. And lastly, on the Daily Trust newspaper, Nigerian youth celebrate Independence Day. Appreciate President Muhammad Buhari. That can be found on page 4 of the Daily Trust newspaper. All right, let's eat the streets and hear opinions of Nigerians regarding issues of national discourse. Welcome, sir. Yeah, thank you. Now, the bold headline of Vagad newspaper today says, Soldiers, police crack down on protesters in rivers, Abuja and Kano. No, fearless in October protests. Soldiers, police crack down on protesters in rivers, Abuja and Kano. That can be found on page 5 of the Vanguard newspaper. Now you as a Nigerian, what do you have to say regarding the um, how soldiers and police crack down protesters in River State, Abuja and Kano? Okay, for, for a start, we know that here in Nigeria, when you talk about the military and the Nigerian police, basically they are, we see them as um, side bodyguards or side tools for the government, those in the executives, those in parliament, those in, uh, in, in, in judicials. They are just tools for them to use to keep the masses in check, basically. So, this is not new to Nigerians. The federal government using the military or the Nigerian police as tools to stop um, the poor masses from protesting and crying out about what they are going through in the nation at large is, is not something new. But beyond all of this, I feel like it is high time that we, the masses, in everything that we are suffering as a citizen of Nigeria, it is high time we come out and say enough is enough. Now, let's go back antecedents to the egg bad governance protest in August. We saw the the crowd in different states, in Abuja, in River State. Let's use River State as, as an example. We saw how people turn out for the 10 days and it was a huge success in terms of the unity. But was it a huge success when it comes to the actualization in the essence of why this protest was being carried out? 
we would say no. Because even after the protest and on our um, Independence Day speech that our president gave, the things that the masses were crying out for were not looked at. They were definitely not looked at. So for for the for the federal government using the military, those are these are just old tactics. And until we the masses say we can look beyond that, I don't think there will be any change. Look at what happened in, in Kenya. Even with the use of the, the, the Kenyan police and their military men, people still came out, people still protested, and the president looked at it and be like, no. Even though we know that lives were, lives are supposed to be lost, not like it is a must, but we know that for peace to come into every state, even in government, they, they told us that for there to be peace, there has to be war, basically. And for every presence of change, people has to come out and say that this is what we want and in essence of it lives are lost look at what happened in kenya people lost their life but at the end of the day changes came came to be but we can go back and tease them to 2020 october and SARS protests and we saw that lives were lost but was there change no no changes has been made. Instead, we see the price of commodities in the market. We see the price of petrol. We see the price of the essential things that the common man is asking for in our daily lives being increased and we are not being able to, to purchase it. Now, they, they come out to tell us that um, uh, they are going to increase the minimum wage and blah, blah, blah. Has it been putting it in? That they put it into effect? No! They've not put it into effect, but you see, today we, we buy fuel in an oil producing nation. Let's look up, in an oil producing state, people buy for as much as one liter for 125, uh, 150, 1,250 naira per liter, which is absurd. Really absurd. So, for the protest, the federal government using the military is just all tax, and we, we from the report, we found out that five um, key personnel, like people that were engaged in the protest, key leaders in the protest in Kano, were arrested. They they use the same thing they do they did in uh, uh, the uh, October 2020 and SARS protest. They use talks to stop people from protesting. We we saw little or no protest in Lagos, peaceful protests like like they say. But when are we going? To, when are we going? Funny enough, eh, if you check what these people are crying out for, it's something that that, that is essential for the common man as a Nigeria. But we are not getting all of that. We need a change in this country. And until the common man like we say come out and say yes enough is enough i don't think anything is going to happen but, but, but like, like you said you said if the common man are ready and uh, you know freedom is not voluntarily given by the oppressor it must be demanded by the oppressed now we've seen some organizations like example the national Association of university students that is their members that is the nigerian student not to come out for the protest so now to me don't you think those are nigerians because some people were doing protests and some people were doing anti-protest so what do you have to say about that are you saying nigerians are not tired about the situation or some set of people are not tired what can you say about it? if you if you remember vividly when we did the october first protest the 10 days protest we saw people also coming out to say that they are not part of the protest and we found out that they were being paid by the government you're talking about the national session of nigerian students and all of that who if you check eh, most of these SDG presidents they are ass leakers to people in power check where who they who they pay their allegiance to it's people in in Pali, who did they go to meet oh please support me i want to go for SDG president most of these SDG presidents have been put into power by the VCs of the school so that they can be controlled and checkmate. Uh, before now, we know when you say the student union governments, we know how the those in power then how they they come out of their shell and stand for what is right for for the Nigerian student and also Nigeria at large. But we, today, what do we see? We see ass leakers. That is what we see in, in today Nigeria. We see ass leakers. People coming out just to, for their own pockets. For their own pocket. Now, as a, as a Nigerian, until we come out in one month and say enough is enough, just like I said. You said until the oppressors come out and say they don't want to go. And mind you, mind you, every leader, every master in Nigeria here will not show you how to fetch water from the well. They will only keep giving you drops so that you keep coming back. You keep. Com they will never build a well for you. They will always keep giving you that little drop so that you keep on asking. They want you to be vulnerable. They need that vulnerable aspect from you. And until we come out and say, no, enough is enough. Don't just give us tiny bit of it. Give us the essential part of it. Give us everything that we need of it. And what are we crying for? We are not crying for something that is not visible or that is not achievable. 
It is very, very achievable. And until we set our mind to be like, okay, yes, this is what we want, and you must give it to us. I don't think there will be any change. The, the bold deadline of the trust newspaper says Independence Day. Jonathan Governors, Max, says Nigeria will overcome challenges. Sir, what can you say about the Independence Day? Are you saying this is the words of hope or they are just deceiving Nigerians? So what do you have to say about this statement? Uh, uh, they are wishing Nigeria well. They are not deceiving Nigerians. But the problem there is that we have corrupt politicians. Uh, that is siphoning and then running this country down. After all, Nigeria has been a blessed country by God. Okay, since I was born, see my age as at now. That's what we've been hearing. But every year, things keep on going high. And things keep on going high. Okay, this time around is the worst. Well, what's the hope of our youth? No way. We can't even understand. Okay, now I am able to suggest one removed fuel subsidy. If you see it's not going on well, why not reverse it back? You can stop people from suffering. Stop people from dying of hunger. Stop people from, you can't buy drugs. Go to the hospitals. People keep on dying every day of hunger. So for them to be sure that things will be better in this country, let's go back how it was during the good luck regime or even uh, uh, before good luck uh, took over government. You see? For, with the condition of things now, telling us there will be improvement, no. There are two things there. Number one, either the reverse back, go back to first subsidy, or they keep the three refineries working. They don't keep it because fuel is the soul of everything. Maybe if fuel comes down now, everything will come down. Let the three refineries be working. We have crude. We are, they're not going to import crude. But I don't know exactly what they are afraid of. I don't know what they are doing. Yeah. This is what a layman can understand. A layman on the street can understand. All those money that have been borrowing, borrowing, what stops them from putting the two refi three refineries working? Get the crude there. Get everything. Let's enjoy this country together. Not only the We'll be enjoying. We are suffering. Do you have another question? Okay, 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 sir. Nigeria is celebrating 64 years of independence. You, as a Nigerian and somebody who is vast in terms of looking at your age, do you say that independence? Are we ripe for independence? And can you say that the independence is it a blessing to Nigeria or a cause? No, 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 no. Independence is a blessing to Nigeria. But the problem is bad leaders. We, ba we have bad leaders. That's the cause we have in this country. Independence, after all, uh, you see, we have talented men who will move this Nigeria forward. But they don't allow them. You see, the bad ones will use money to say, take over, buy everything, and then keep everybody suffering. Okay, okay, talking about the EU of both buying, it is the citizens that are collecting money to vote during an election. What do you have to say about that? Because you know, during elections, citizens will collect 10,000 naira, 5,000 naira to vote all these leaders. What do you have to say about that? You know, before you can be a leader, you are a citizen. So it is bad citizens that leads to bad leadership. Do you agree with that? Or yeah. You see, the person giving money, buying voters' card, is even the worst citizen. I think I understand. Because they, first of all, keep the citizens hunger. So that by the time they bring one, two thousand, they will rush for it. A hungry man is an angry man. Now, if you are hungry, you happen, somebody happens to give you one thousand, you will obey him. So they themselves bribing the citizens to get to that position are the worst Nigerians we have ever seen. It wasn't like that in those days. Then, what's your advice to Nigerians regarding the situation going on in the country? Yeah, as I said earlier, now I said first. Let them revise back, let them go back to subsidy. Then get the three refineries working before any other thing. All the things they are talking is just wasting of time. If the three refineries are working, we are not going to import crude. The crude is there. Then uh, at the same time, uh, for now, if they start with reversing back to the full subsidy before they get the trade refineries working. But uh, let me ask you, my good friend, what stops them from keeping this trade refineries working for the past uh, how many years now? But a, a single person, Dangote, was able to put his son in good shape. But the whole nation couldn't be able. But, just, but, but they are frustrating the Dangote refinery. That is why I'm, I, I was, what I was telling you, that we have bad leaders. 
We are not fearing them. They are all corrupt. We have bad leaders. That is the problem we have in this country. Bad leaders. You see, have you forgotten the Bible quotation that says, when the righteous is on the throne, his people rejoice. Eh? Eh, when the wicked is there, oh, keep on suffering. I don't know who is there now, whether it's the righteous or the wicked. I don't know. But, it's, you know, God's word must really fulfill. It's there. It's there. God has already blessed this country. But bad leaders. Okay, what will it benefit somebody? You siphon billions. Billions. You know how many years it will take you to finish billions? <laughs> we are generation to come. But people are there looking for one naira to eat. No. One word of prayer to Nigeria. Oh, I wish them luck. From now till next year, let there be change. Let there be goodies. More goodies for Nigeria. Amen. You are welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, sir. The bold headlines of the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. Fearless in October. Protests in Lagos. Oh, no. Oshun altered in Abuja. Yesterday was um, the Independence Day and there was end bad governance protest. We are celebrating independence and we are also protesting against ba uh, bad governance in Nigeria. What can you say about the Independence Day? Do you think Nigeria independence is a blessing or a cause? Well, the Nigeria independence is supposed to have been a blessing. But the leaders we are seeing today have made it it's, it's like a cause to us. Because the reason being that if you go to if you go to the to the market now, you can hardly buy something. If you go with twenty thousand or fifty thousand, you can hardly buy anything with it. Is it a good thing? The country was started before them, are ahead of us. The leaders, you talk to them, some of them will tell you that uh, uh, those who are going for protest, that they should go and protest, that they will be enjoying. Them and their family will be enjoying. Is it a good one? Are those people are supposed to be in the uh, authority of government? They are not. So to me, they have made it to be a cause to us now. So Nigeria is crying. Nigerians are crying. Nigerians are crying. So it's only God that will come and save us. If not, these people meant bad for us. Thank you. Okay, okay, okay sir. You, you are protesting in Lagos. Oh, no, you should not tell in Abuja. Like you said, some people are protesting and some people altered that protest. What, can you, what do you have to say about that? The government to ah, my brother, everybody should be ready to face them. All their plan is they are ready to kill anybody to achieve their aim. And that these people and these people you know are the people who we are protesting you know, during Jonathan. I know some of them. Even the sorry to tell you, Mr. President was the person leading a protest that time. But today he cannot allow you to go for protest. Why is it like that? And, and, and lastly, sir, do you think you know these are end bad government protests? We saw what happened on August 1st, yes. and now they are protesting again. And do you think the federal government has been responsive to the demands of Nigerians? Come again. I said, do you think that the government has been responsive to the demands of the protesters? They, I don't care. They are not interested. The government is the government now. The government we are seeing today, they are not interested in whatever with whatever they are saying. So, okay. okay. What's, what's your advice to Nigerians? My advice is all the youth should come out. We cannot die for one day. If they want to kill us, let's, let them kill us all because it's just like we are dead. Somebody will come out in the house you have not eaten. In the night you don't know whether you eat or not. If you have a children, you don't know how your children will eat. Is it a good one? Government will pay you. How much are they paying in a month? At the end of it, the money cannot acquire anything. You can't afford anything in the house. So the youth should come out. Everybody should come out. Let us fight this thing once and for all. Thank you. All right, we've come to the end of the newspaper review here on TAV TV. My name is Kolade Ogusomi. You can follow us on our social media page and do where to subscribe to get our content. See you next time. Thank you.